So you guys, a couple things. One, it's New Year's Eve. We're bussing, right? It's about to be 2022. Hello there, hello world, welcome. I just heard them, I, I heard their music, but I didn't know who they were. Um, and then I just happened to be watching um, James Corden's Carpool Karaoke. And I was like, oh, they're like, these are some nice little bangers, okay. And next thing you know, I was just been on a bench fest of BTS for the past week. I'm addicted to them. I, I know all their names, Jin, RL, Okay, hey, now I'm doing um, the Hobi, which is or Hobi J Ho. Uh, you have V Taeyeon. You have Lil Cook J K. Um, you have Sugar or August Z, because that guy's in his music. I don't know if I'm saying it right here. I'm probably fucking up. Oh, I am so sorry for it. My bad. Oh, Jin, Jin, there you go. So I if these. Like when it comes to entertainers, like they're on Michael Jackson level. Like Michael, I can see why young girls act like that. They're on Michael Jackson level, okay? They can sit here, do all these jumps and flips and dances in the air, and still maintain the tone. And then you know they completely like they they jack the hip hop culture, which is you know neither here nor there. I I I don't, don't want to think of it as jack. I know some people. Hip hop is so it's so um transcendent transcending. It's so big, it's bigger than you, bigger than me, bigger than that type of thing. That other people from other cultures they can take it and appreciate. I'm, I'm hoping that they do appreciate the core of it and integrate it into their own style. And that's what the BTS has moved right. Should we do the thing with the little funky song? Well, not New Year's yet. Well, hello, you guys. It's your girl, Miss Shan Baby, and I'm back with another episode of Diary of a Mad Black Bartender, where I'm mad as in crazy, crazy about these cocktails. If this is your first time being here, welcome. Join me. I appreciate you being here. You know, take a moment, subscribe, like, and comment. Tell me what you like to know about uh, in the spirits world, what you're into. Also, 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 if you're a returning person, hello, welcome back. Hi, welcome. It has been a great year. First of all, I shouted this out before. I got to shout out again. Thank you. Thank you so much. As of, text, as of today, I'm at 510. You know, I appreciate um, the new subbies. Hello, welcome. Please, 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 please don't feel like you are not appreciated. You truly are. Thank you guys so much. So I appreciate you guys um, subscribing, which is a great way to great way to support a young, not so young woman. <laughs> great way to support an entrepreneur like myself. So you guys, thank you so much. So today, you guys, because New Year's is coming up, I hope you set your goals. I hope you got your things together. But it's also time for you to pick up a champagne. And I know what you're thinking. Champagne, because that's me. My name is Champagne. It's, I don't really get to be in a room too often where it's just like, which champagne, me? Me or this one? You want you, me? me? Ah, you want this champagne. Like I never got to get that growing up and it's kind of weird that it happens for me, happens to me when it comes to liquor. But you know what? I just take what I get sometimes. You, it's not always about uh, complaining. You just gotta take what you get sometimes. And so I'm gonna take that one. But you might be like, I ain't got enough money. You know, I'm broke. I wanna have a good time. Well, there's a, a ton of um inexpensive wine that you guys can pop um a lot of them have some pretty decent taste to them i have one today that we're going to play around with try some different variations also if you've never opened up a bottle of champagne this my friend is for you now some of you guys are like 
oh my goodness isn't that easy you never know what you never know what other people know that's one thing i've learned people are so quick to just to just shit on other people when they don't know the same knowledge that you have but you don't know what they've been exposed to what they've experienced or what they just thought about you know if you're not a champagne drinker you probably never even thought about a cork and then one day you'll get around a cork and now you'll be like oh miss champagne told me how to use a cork i got this and that's what i'm here for we're buddies and friends and pals i'm here to help you so today's champagne that we're trying is a barefoot bubbly peach now this is a rather inexpensive wine i've never had it before but um my best friend had it and i was like i've got to try it and i want to try this so so bad um this is a part of the Barefoot Wines Collectors. You guys have seen it. It's the, the little foot right there. That's Barefoot Wines. Um, it was made in 1965. Well, it was started in 1965 by a California winemaker named Davis Bynum. Um, he ha had an affinity for wine and he was really into it. So that's when it started. But it really didn't start bussing, bussing. Getting to that next... Did I say it right? Did I sound hit? Did I, did I sound hit? It really didn't start taking off until 1986. They started creating more like the trademark logo that you see here and started just sending it all over and exploring with people um, and just really growing the brand. So Barefoot is relatively inexpensive. It's like $9.99 at the store, at your local grocery store that sells it. It's usually in the wine aisle. Um, I unfortunately paid a inflation price because I wanted the ball so bad, but luckily the money went to my niece. So I paid my best friend $20 for it. This is not a $20 wine. It is $9. If anyone, if you know, who's not your best friend tries to get you for money, it's okay. You guys, I know some of you guys might be thinking <laughs> couldn't be me, but she, she earned her best friend stripes this year. Like she put her best friend work in and for that, I thank her. So um, it says most awarded wine brand for US competitions. I've not had a chance to check it out. I probably won't, but not today. Um, it says Charmette Method Sparkling Wine Secondary Fermentation Before Bottling. So that's telling you the fermentation process that it goes through before it is bottled. Um, this is not necessarily a champagne like me. Um, some people will call it champagne just because um, some people use champagne as like a, they use champagne interchangeably when it comes to sparkling wine, but that is not the case. Champagne is specific wine that is made in the Champagne region of France that goes through a, the certain Champagne, I, was, I, I cannot pronounce it, it might be Champagne and Wah. <clears throat> it might be called the Champagne and Wah or Champagne Wah process um, for the Champagne in France. Uh, this one, it does not call itself a champagne. It doesn't even call itself a Moscato. It really is a sparkling wine. So you guys, I'm fucking cheating you this year. I apologize. But if you're just like, I don't know the difference, champagne, this is for you. This is the video for you people who don't know the difference. Hello. Even though this is not a champagne, you still can treat it like a champagne. So today we're going to try to open it um, a regular way. I want to try to do it another way. Uh, I don't know, I have to do a video for that. But I'm just gonna do it the regular way because I, I don't want someone who's never opened wine before or champagne before to uh, try this and then like lose an eye. So we'll do the other way I wanna do later. But this is a basic way of how you are to open your champagne bottles or your sparkling wine bottles. Your sparkling wine bottles and your champagne bottles are, what is it called sparkling wine? It just feels like it's, I'm overkilling it. You know champagne is sparkling wine. You know I'm talking about the sparkling wine family. Why are you doing this? Champagne is a sparkling wine. Uh, the types of the bottles, they come in similar bottles, which is like this. There is usually like a wire over top of it that pushes a cork down. The cork is like, when it comes out, it's gonna be much fatter than it was in there. But because of the bubbles, unlike your wines, like your Regular wines, they're not really carbonated. So there's not a lot of pressure behind the uh, the cork of the bottle, which is why when people pop open champagne bottles, you see the cork and the bubbles all run out. Um, it's just basically like a big old soda can. And when you're shaking it up, it's building more and more in that pressure. Now it's very important to know how to open up a champagne bottle. I've opened a lot of champagne bottles before, but there was one time where I was a bit, um, what's the word? 
of a green behind my ears. I, sh I looked like I was green behind my ears, but I wasn't. I just, I don't know, I just wasn't paying attention. So it, that was on me. So um, I was working like in this really nice millionaire's house and I had to open up the champagne. I'm like, all right. So at the top of this millionaire's house, they're like pictures like of their family. Like, I don't think they spent a whole lot on those picture frames, but they could. But they're all at the top. And then of course you got like glass here, glass here, glass over here, a glass table. Like just a lot of um, bitch be carefulness around there. So I went and I opened up the bottle of the champagne and then I don't know what I was thinking. I just took my hand from it and I didn't think about it. And the cork popped and like went off the top of the room and came down to the bottom. Talk about a blessing. What a blessing <laughs> that didn't hit something of great value. At least that, at least I don't know. But I was like, wow. Um, I should, and from that point on, it was like, I gotta pay attention. I always gotta pay attention. So I became overly cautious for you. So that, so that doesn't happen to you. And also so that you seem like you're a, um, you're pretty, pretty, uh, knowledgeable guy when it comes to everything. Oh yeah. I'm going to show you how to take off your champagne bottle top so you don't look all weird or your sparkling wine. So first things first, look for like a piece of the, um, a piece of the material, this wrapper, that's kind of just pulled out to the side. It might look be a little tab or a little area right here. And I might look a little weird because I got nails on, but you know, rock with me. This, a lot of these champagnes have little tags like this right here. I hope you guys can see it. Yep, there you go. I, this tag is there for a reason. It's so that you can take it off. You wanna grab it and just kind of pull it around. There you go. And then you just tear off the paper. Here you are. You're right here, you're just to your cork in the middle part that we talked about. Get rid of your, your wrappings, puts it away. Puts the wrappings away. This is the, the fun part, but it can be very dangerous. Always be careful. I know you guys see in TV shows and rap stars, they're shaking it and they're just knocking it off and everybody's like, ah! Be very careful because all that looks fun, that looks great, that's like super, super fun and awesome because if you angle it wrong, you can put somebody's eye out, like literally. Like it's coming with a lot of force, so it's, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. You can knock out a window, like it's, not a game people. So what I would say is I will go and take the silver part that you see in here and this is the wire part I was telling you guys about. You can take this and then pull it out and then you're gonna twist it. You're gonna unravel it. You're just gonna unravel it. All right. And now you're allowing the cork to be looser and looser. So as it becomes looser and looser you want to take your hand and kind of cover it. It shouldn't come out right away on its own, but like I said, depending on how earthy jerky you got, it might have a lot of pressure. So at this point, you can take this off or you can leave it on. If you leave it on, it is gonna kinda hurt a little bit more um, around your palm with this wire. But if I'm so busy and I just gotta open up champagne after champagne, um, I, just, I just learned to pull it off that way. You don't wanna take your hand off too much and leave it unattended too long because it could do like it did to me, surprise you because you're like, oh, it's cool. But the pressure steep, the pressure is still building up and because this isn't there to really hold it down a little bit more, it's gonna pop off. So let's take off the wire. All right, you're like, oh, it's cool. Again, same premise, always keep your hand over it. If it doesn't come off on its own, which is like cool because you know, pressure, you can take it, hold it, Look at that, you get that. All right, let's get us a little glass. Happy New Year! Oh, I'm too, too late, too early. I should have popped it, I should have count down. Uh, it has a good smell. Ooh, I get peach. Kind of like a passion fruit note. 
made like a honeysuckle. I'm getting better, you guys. I'm getting better. Mmm. 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 Now, that is good. If you're a person who's like, I don't like wine, I don't like the taste of wine because it's nasty, because it's so bitter, because it's so tannin, this is something you like. It's sweet. Um, it's not dry at all. Dry is going to be less sweet. But it's nice and sweet. Um, it tastes very good. Like, I kind of don't want to do anything else to it, but I'm going to. But let's say you got this and you're just like, I want to spruce it up a bit. Well, first thing, the easiest thing, try a garnish. Garnishes are great. I got some um, blackberries here. Nice, fresh washed blackberries. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Or you can use the obvious choice, peach. And then I also got some Chambord. I wanted to play with this. What is Chambord, you guys? Chambord is a raspberry liqueur. Black raspberry liqueur made from France. Let's see if it tells us anymore. Ooh. Finest raspberries and blackberries. Blended with exotic flavors of black raspberry, black currants, Madagascan vanilla, and cognac. Ooh, this will be great in like a Hennessy. Like you could I can make a bomb Hennessy and drink with this. We'll come back to that. Yeah, we'll come back to that. So we have a little bit of this. This is if you want to give it a little bit more umph, some fanciness. So first thing first, I we're gonna try it by getting the blackberry liqueur in first. Mm -hmm. Not too much, just a half ounce. And then we're gonna pour that in there. All right, look at that. Look at that beauty. Yes, and then we're gonna take our peach. Ooh. And then we're gonna take a berry or two. Hey, well, let's taste it. Mm. Ooh, that's good. That's good. Look at that. Ah. A blackberry champagne. Ooh. I guess you're going to have to check out my Instagram page to see what I'm going to call it. But it's so good. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks, you guys, for, Thanks, you guys for joining me today checking me out real quick. I totally appreciate it. Get you some champagne. Check out that bubbly. It's 9 out of 9. Check out my drizzling link below if you want to get your own. Have it delivered to you. Unfortunately, you won't get it by New Year's. But if you're interested in trying it later time for later events like weddings, birthday parties, or just because you're a fancy chick, get on there, subscribe, and get yours ASAP. If you haven't had a chance, don't forget to subscribe. Support your girl because I'm trying to get there. Because if I get there, you get there. We getting coffee. That's what I'm doing now. We getting coffee. It's going to be a new year. I pray that you ring in the new year to someone that you love. Or just with the peace within yourself. I pray for peace for yourself. For wellness. For wealth. For your health. That you just enjoy your time and that whatever it is that's holding you back this year, that you could just shake it off and get it together in 2022. This is the last time I'll be filming for you guys in 2021. Oh my God, this, this is crazy. Happy New Year's. Be sound, be loved. Bye.